Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Fun and Games Podcast. I'm Jeff Moonen. And I am Matt A.K. Stormageddon. And a big aspect of being a part of gaming culture, whether following it, adding to it, whatever, especially nowadays, is the prevalence of memes and their effect on game development, on game communities, on our perception of games themselves. And I'm I'm just putting my foot down here. I'm pronouncing it as meme. Yeah, it's meme. It's not mem. Mems can can go die. Also, I say jif or jif as uh, Mike Regnetta says. So, you know, get that out of the way too. Oh, the G is silent. It's it's if. <laughs> it's if. <laughs> That's a new take. I'll have to tell him that when I see him in a couple weeks. Uh, uh, I yeah, it's he... it's I didn't originate it, but it's it's my favorite way to derail it. It's but good, yeah. Just for the sake of things, it is a meme. It is not a, a mem, a meme, or what have you. And um, for those who... Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, uh, yeah, memes have permeated our culture to the point where adults, well, you know, well over the age of the modern young youngin, uh, know what they are at this point. It's kind of ubiquitous. Uh, there was memes in Marvel movies this year and last year. Like, they are pretty much uh, in the zeitgeist at this point. Yeah, and to further define what we're talking about, uh, a meme is any sort of idea or moment, whether it is a line, a character, a an event that happens that sort of uh, propagates, that sort of uh, grows beyond the confines from which it was created. The idea that there are people who have never played a single moment of World of Warcraft and yet know Leroy Jenkins. Yeah, that's that's definitely an early early version of how memeing uh, affects gaming. When it when it is when it is part of a Jeopardy answer, <laughs> it it has propagated. Yeah, um, you know, I guess a broad example of this, a non-specific example, would be the memification of Waluigi. The idea that this character is so vital to Smash Brothers and and the sadness in which he has not become a main playable character has gotten so exaggerated that it became a meme in and of itself. The idea that Waluigi is not going to be in Smash, um, you know, and that was one of the most well-known ones uh, in the recent year and a half or so of gaming. Yeah, I'd say so. Now, now and it's kind of funny because in instances like that, the meme isn't necessarily a specific set of words. It isn't right. necessarily a perfectly intact, you excise it and then you repeat it. It is, however, an idea that is repeated. Sometimes in lieu of in lieu of whatever it is you were thinking of saying, or if it's close enough to what it is, it becomes both, uh, it can be a shorthand and it could be the absence of an original thought if we're being both kind and unkind to the idea, <laughs> you know, this, the sort of thing of if people are talking about the development of super smash brothers, ultimate or DLC characters, the idea that if there is blank space, it will be filled with wind Waluigi yeah. or justice for Waluigi or any of these other ideas about it. It is a phenomenon to put it, um, Simply, to put it uh, without emotion, it is a phenomenon. Yeah, I think what's interesting about memeing and its effects on gaming specifically is like there are certain games that I might not have ever known anything about if it weren't for memes connected to them. One that I can think of is the melee combat a multiplayer game called For Honor, where you can play as Vikings or Samurai or Knights. There was... Um, 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 call on me for honor, which was a video of the Viking pumping in a way that looked like dancing to the song call on me. And it's just him in random places in the video air humping to the song in time with the beat and the locations changing. And it's a silly video. It's really dumb. The song's very catchy, but like, I, I know the character models of For Honor. I know what the display screen for For Honor looks like because of that meme, because I've not played it otherwise. Um, it recently became free on the Epic Store, actually, so I may eventually play it. But the only reason I know the game at all, uh, other than by name, 
is because of this ridiculous minute and a half video that is is referenced constantly. Right. And and so in a weird way it makes advertising. Yeah. It does sort of advertise the presence of a game certainly uh in uh, terms of tracking down the source mm-hmm. because again we live in an internet age which allows these dark corners or smaller niches mainstream or more uh wide exposure and it makes it easy for those who are suddenly uh, aware of something just through a a passing meme a glancing reference to track it down i one of my favorite just uh, mindless activities if I'm at any sort of nerd convention is trying to figure out what the meme shirts are about. <laughs> I, I've never played Dark Souls. Right. Like, uh, like that, that, that just um, blunt confession. I've never played Dark Souls. I intend to. I will play Dark Souls. I haven't yet. But I do know that you praise the sun. <laughs> yeah, you do. It's true. Now, I know not everybody will praise the sun. But if you believe, praise the sun. And I know this because I would see shirts of it. I would see people doing the praise the sun pose. And it's very funny to see the sheer uh scope of its exposure when it's really not to my knowledge that big of a deal within the game. Uh, no, uh, I have actually played the Dark Souls games, mostly multiplayer, because I'm not very good at them. Um, and yeah, it's one of the groups you can join, and then you get benefits for being a part of that group. Um, I always call them the Sun Bros, but I think they have a better name than that. So yeah, the the funny thing about mentioning Dark Souls is that Dark Souls has been a meme factory over the years. The idea that the sentence blank is the Dark Souls of blank exists is because of that game and its difficulty level or the fact that there are tons of cute animal videos where the animal will encompass the camera and then it cuts to you died which is in the font and the effect with the the music of Dark Souls uh it's really in- which for the longest time I thought was a weird Resident Evil thing <laughs> I mean it's the same kind of vibe right this idea of like this it is mellow music and you're just dead um in my more ignorant days I was like is this from a recent Resident Evil like what's <laughs> Because I'm used to that one with like in Resident Evil 1 and 2 with like the zombies tearing you apart and the bloody thing. Yeah, t- but totally. Um, and it's just funny to me because like, again, Dark Souls was a game I would have never played on my own. I played with friends because it was fun and it was cheap on Steam. The reason we play a lot of games. Um, mm-hmm. But the idea that I get all those memes having played the game, but even not having played them, they're fairly in, uh, easy to understand. Like the one I mentioned earlier, blank is the Dark Souls of blank is this idea that a certain thing is the dark souls of that uh, archetype or genre because it's so difficult, you know? Um, right. You know, to the point where, you know, it got hyper, super meta with like dark souls is the dark souls of gaming and things like that. This idea of, you could just say something's hard, but it's funnier to repeat rhetoric that is ubiquitous across the internet. I mean, to the point where a lot of game reviewers and game reporters were sick of it you know like not everything needs to be compared to dark souls but it became so memeable because it was so well known how difficult those games were even if you've never played one right and it almost i would imagine for some journalists became a matter of get ahead of the joke by mentioning it somehow in the review right it, it is very interesting how this sort of shorthand develops and we find ourselves in a place where the shorthand can develop and evolve and recurse and invert quickly because of, well, internet. But not just because of internet, but because of the fact that we live in a, um, but basically a world where just about every game is expected to be updated and have DLC mm-hmm. or not necessarily be a singular event when it is released. So, Whereas if you want to put a reference into an animated show, you've got anywhere from a week to nine months, a year or so to, to get that in there. Uh, when you film a show, you've got to get it through teams of writers. You've got to get it through all sorts of other hoops and things. But if you want to reference game memeing culture within games, 
Sometimes that's just one person seeing it and going, well, that's in the game now. And it shows up the next day. So it allows fast evolution. It allows us to, within a week, hear, revel in, and become sick of a meme or an idea. And then by the time it even catches up to a larger AAA title and it gets updated into the game, we're like, oh, well, I guess it's over now. You know, uh, Final Fantasy XIV is referencing over 9,000 or, or whatever it is. I don't know if it is or not. <laughs> also, over 9,000 is a very old meme. Vintage meme, in fact. Yes. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, it's, and it's interesting because like you were saying earlier, too, it is very much in the vein of free advertising, right? This idea that you're going to learn about a thing that you know nothing about just because of very accessible short comics, essentially, which is what a lot of memes boil down to, um, either one panel mm -hmm. or several panels. Um, and the idea that uh, meme mixing is pretty common, too. Like the idea that like the perfection meme with Magneto from first class, um, the bedroom scene with Mystique, like you can use that meme with anything because it's commenting on a series of three. Right. Um, yes. And so I often see that incorporated with gaming. Um, and like, I, I don't know that I would say necessarily it's good or bad um it, it's kind of hard to say like i enjoy a good meme and i come from a place of lowbrow comedy and loving puns as well which memes i feel like are an evolution of puns you know kind of a play on words in a lot of a lot of ways a lot of them are and i i and i do think they're funny i do think sometimes also they're too much or they go too far but you know it is interesting to watch it intermingle into culture and then even show you know memes showing up within video games as well it is is not uncommon for deadpool in any marvel property ever to make a meme joke at some point or another just because mm -hmm. especially with deadpool he can he can get away with it right but it's also i'm i'm thinking in terms of as as we're talking about memes i'm thinking also of some of the older video game specific memes mm -hmm. because there is the sort of idea that there are things that have come up in games, been developed, uh, been released, been created, been teased that came about in, I would say simpler times or more wild Westian points in video game culture. Mm -hmm. You know, there there's been internet for as long, the internet's been around long, about as long as video games, right? Give or take, and give or take your definition of video games and your definition of the internet. Um, that that is not meant to be fact. That is just a sense of perspective, and merely access to both has shifted, and speed of access has shifted. But in the times when Matt, say you and I were kids, there were plenty of video game magazines and. Uh, screenshots would happen or reviews would come out and people would talk about and question and wonder about all sorts of things. And some of them are the, the stuff of urban legend, the idea of recruiting new people in Final Fantasy VI mm -hmm. or, or uh, ha having Eris at the very end of the game in Final Fantasy VII. Um, but I'm also thinking of Things like fighting games. Fighting games are a definite series where memes can develop, flourish, and sometimes, uh, I suppose, graduate in a way. Mm -hmm. um, the two in particular that I'm thinking of that I suppose I would consider them memes are from Mortal Kombat and Street Fighter. And both of them are based off of mistakes that people made mm -hmm. on... On the original Mortal Kombat arcade cabinet, you could um, go into like the uh, the status menu and see everything is going on. How many times Reptile had been uh, unlocked? How many fatalities had been performed? How many this? How many matches? How many whatever? And amongst them was the listing for how many error macros happened, but they were sh it was shortened to Air Mac, E R M A C. <laughs> And it was around, and I think it was somewhere in the same listing near when reptiles were. And so people went, there's a character named Air Mac? <laughs> Who is Air Mac? How do we unlock Air Mac? We need to make this happen. And 
there would even be references to it later. Like, uh, I think Reptile would show up and sometimes and say, Air Mac who? Yeah. And eventually, and I believe Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, mm-hmm. they created Air Mac. Yep. The character who is just another palette swap ninja that they have now evolved with. And, oh, but, oh look, Air Mac exists. The other one is an, another infamous vintage whatever meme based off of a mistranslation in Ryu's victory quotes for Street Fighter 2 one of them was basically saying you'll need to defeat my dra- you'll need to avoid my dragon fist to have a chance against me you'll need to overcome my dragon fist right now they translated that as you must defeat Shen Long to stand a chance and everyone again Who's Shen Long? Yeah. I want to unlock Shen Long. I want to defeat Shen Long. This is a fighting game. I defeat everything. I defeated the car. I need to defeat Shen Long. And it was eventually made that Shen Long was the name of Ryu and Ken's teacher and now exists as a playable character in these are modern times. Although that didn't happen until I want to say Street Fighter 4. Uh, maybe. He Maybe might, five. He might have existed in like the anime and the manga. But he was in the comics. He he was like a character, but he was finally playable in recent years. Correct. Yeah. Well, yeah, and like Street Fighter, especially, has had other memeable moments even outside the game. I mean, talking back to what you had mentioned earlier, that memes aren't always just words; they are something beyond that. The, Sometimes they're music. Yes, and Guile's theme going with literally everything is a very pervasive meme in the street fighter community and just a nerd community and it, it all started from like a, a kid fighting back against the school bully and like someone put guile's theme over it and it synced up really well so then people started putting it over tons of other things to the point where it just became a thing you know and and like talking about old school memes like you bring it up probably the oldest gaming meme i would dare say this is the first viral gaming meme uh, which was also born out of music, was, I can't remember the name of the, the poorly translated game, but all your base are belong to us. No, zero wing. Zero wing. No chance to survive. Make your time. Someone made, What you say? Someone made a techno song over it, and like people, and like it just became this runaway hit because the translation's just so bad, and it's so um, um, text-to-speak, Either it was text to speak or it was emulating it, but either way, like it's just so stilted that you couldn't help but laugh. And it was an otherwise very serious sci-fi game, but the tra- it was it was a it was a pretty decent shoot 'em up. But because the translation was so poor, it get it grew beyond this life that it would have otherwise never had. Like people right. people still want to play Zero Wing. Because of that meme, because of that gag, um, you know, and back then, I don't even think we were calling it a meme. Like, it's hard to even like, I don't I don't think we had really the concept of it at that time. Or if we did, it wasn't common knowledge. It was more of the the things of like, it was a you're the man now, dog. It was an e-bombs. It was a, you know, it was a whatever it was on, whatever an Internet portal you drew your memes from. There they were. Yeah. And as someone who never even played zero wing to this day though i should remedy that at some point i know the graphics of the game the main villain like all of these different things about the game just because of that meme that's true which is really interesting you know and on the other hand like talking about pop culture memes things that permeate just the gaming sphere um a game i think that for sure permeated that um, because it was literally everywhere, was Skyrim's I used to be a warrior like you, but then I took an arrow in the knee. Well, Skyrim is just, um, it is a, it is a it's meme or You just mine it. Yeah. It's one- whether it's that, whether it's the fact that Skyrim is on everything. <laughs> yeah. You can play it on a toaster, on Alexa, on your refrigerator, literally anything. You, you can, yeah, you can play it on an abacus, Skyrim, abacus. And, and the fact that Todd Howard himself references this meme, it's again, that matter of, uh, it does, is it still viable? Well, they're still releasing Skyrim. So yeah, I guess so. <laughs> you know, or, and what's funny though, is like in those moments, um, 
it's comedy that's driving those memes, right? It's funny things that happen mm-hmm. in the game or that are associated with the game. Oh, I think my Alex in the other room booted up the Skyrim uh, app because <laughs> I said it so loud. It's fine. Are, It'll tire, are you serious? It'll tire itself out. Um, oh my god! But you, put a bucket on your put a bucket on Alexa. It'll forget. Right, exactly. But you know, just to the same, there are memes that come up in games that aren't comedy. They are just known, um, like the thinking about uh, the cake is a lie from Portal. Mm-hmm. So many people know the cake is a lie, and that gag who have never played Portal, which is a crime because Portal is so easy to and quick to play. It's definitely worth playing. But but that's not about... I mean, there's inherent comedy in Portal to begin with, but The Cake is a Lie is less about comedy and more about highlighting a running theme or gag in a game. Yeah, and it's very interesting. We, we talked about Portal in a previous episode on that fact of it is a game that it is very difficult if you are at all tuned in the gaming culture to play completely fresh. You know whether just knowing the cake is a lie or knowing the voice of GLaDOS or knowing any number of lines, twists, turns, what have you. It is very difficult to be someone who is uh, even mildly versed in gaming culture to play that game completely fresh. Yeah. Which is... Interesting to say the least, and it's still a very, very worthwhile game. But this is that is another aspect of meme culture within game culture. It makes it difficult to, to you know, it can draw you to new experiences, whether something like Zero Wing or For Honor, but it can also make it so you, you, you can have recommendations to play Portal. People aren't going to. People aren't necessarily going to recommend you play Zero Wing because it is a classic of the Sega Genesis. But you know, until you said that, I didn't, wasn't even sure what console it was on. I assumed Super Nintendo or Sega Genesis, but I wasn't actually positive. Sega Genesis. I, I imagine it had other releases, but if you're going to be playing it in America right now, Sega Genesis. But Portal is a game that you would probably play. Dark Souls is a game that someone would probably play. And whether or not the fact that people have certain surprises or new experiences robbed from them, well, that's also a discussion on spoiler culture. I still feel you can enjoy something even if you know something's coming. But yeah. these, I bring these things up not to pass a judgment, but to simply speak them into our podcast ether as food for thought. Yeah, I and it's it's tough. Like I truly do wish that people who didn't know the cake was a lie, or who did rather, who have heard the meme but have never played Portal, to, I I wish you could kind of take back that um, that experience so they could um, enjoy it for the uh, first time. A podcast I listened to. Shout out to the uh, Super Deformed Gamecast. But they, on a recent episode, answered a question like, if you could erase the experience of a game and re-experience it for the first time, what game would that be? And, like, I'm not going to get into that because that's a whole other subject. Yeah, it is. But I think it's... I think Portal is one of those games that I would wish people could experience for the first time again because the the dry humor is so tight, the the structure is so good, the story is interesting, and the mechanics are so simple. You know, you can't have first experiences more than once. And... Mm -hmm. I don't know that we cherish them as much as we should. And spoiler culture and meme culture kind of exasperate that. And while, again, I'm not uh, putting down meme culture. I happen to be a meme connoisseur myself. I I do sometimes wish that we didn't have them because they can ruin things. The idea that I couldn't share some memes that I really enjoyed from Avengers Endgame for months because I didn't want to spoil things. And a lot of them were such obvious spoilers, Mm -hmm. pretty much anything to do with the Hulk. Um, Right. And that was a little frustrating. And that's not anyone's fault per se, you know, because I want to respect people's wishes to not see those things so they can enjoy something fresh. Well, what that does is it alters your sphere of influence. I mean, there's plenty of game experiences, new movies, niche interests, whatever, that I may not ever post on Twitter or Tumblr or any sort of social media, 
but I will without hesitation show them to several close friends because I know what they have seen, I know what they know, and I have a feeling for what they will find amusing or interesting. And it becomes a thing of, well, I can't tell the general everybody about this funny thing. We didn't used to be able to do that at all, but we can still tell our friends. And sure. again, that's not a good, bad, or indifferent, but it is sort of an interesting uh, state of things that we find ourselves at the moment. Yeah, I I think it's really interesting to also look how memes have evolved within gaming culture and when things get updated, you know, source material changes, the memes change too. Like this idea, and this is adjacent because the memes are actually from the animated series in the movie, but like P the, the shocked Pikachu meme, that started based on a still from the anime. And then when um, the movie came out, which we discussed at length on a previous episode, Pikachu made a similar face, I'm sure very intentionally by the animators, which they then replaced and started using that because it obviously looks way better. Um, right. And, and But that also becomes part of the template. Right. And I think that's also really funny. And it allows you to mix it with other memes of like improved quality or, you know, like the idea of improving the quality of Pikachu shocked face, mixing it with the perfection meme, the Magneto perfection meme, you know, things like that. And I think it's really interesting how those kinds of things in, in, intermingle. And a lot of memes are based and steeped in nerd culture. Like, I wasn't surprised that in in Black Panther at one point, Shiri goes, what are those? Like, because yeah. because that meme is steeped in a particular culture and so is that movie, it made perfect sense to reference something like that, especially considering how technologically advanced they were. Of course they would have seen memes. Um, they have the internet. Right. And, and so I think that that's the more fascinating side of memeing mm -hmm. things is that you're, ne you're also never sure what the next big thing is going to be. Like, I would be lying if I said I didn't tweet things and hope that that, like, I would tweet a hilarious joke or picture that I think was brilliant and then nothing. Crickets. Um, you know, you can't predict what's going to be wrapped up in memeing and retweeting because mm -hmm. the, the zeitgeist is hard to predict. It's hard to predict, and it's always fascinating. This is true. It's always fascinating to me what does catch on, you know? Right. I, for one, know that I am hilarious and that it is a waste to share it with the general public. <laughs> um, but I think you're pretty funny. that's me. Um, Thank you. You're, 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 you're a pretty funny dude, too. I, I do what I can. I mean, supposedly, according to other podcasters who have been listening to our podcast, we have good chemistry, so I will take it. Delight. And, well, it's also funny to think about because there is... The question of what defines memes versus references, because there are certain things that, is it a reference or is it a meme? If you call something, someone, a miserable little pile of secrets or a miserable little pile of anything, <laughs> is that because the, the, the line is so mimetic that it has, like it will show up in places or is it because we are referencing this goofy thing that we all know? Sure. I think in something like, I mean, the, the, the line in question is from Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Right. The English translation, which when they re-released it on the PSP and the PS4, PSP is the Dracula X collection and PS, the PS4 uh, Dracula X Symphony of the Night uh, bundle is based off of the PSP translation and PSP voice cast. Um, that line is gone. And many people, I, I'm, I'm going to scientifically say, many people are very upset by that. Sure. Because it's still a great game. It's not you come to the game because of the bad lines. It helps. It's an aspect. But it, it is what it is. Now, something like that being referenced within Bloodstained, a game created by a lot of the same team. We talked about it in our uh, previous Metroidvania episode. I feel like there... It's a reference. Right. But anywhere else, it's mimetic. Um, you can pretty much take any game and give it a lightsaber. Yeah. Like, any game, give it a lightsaber. D explain it however you want. Change its look. We all know a lightsaber when we see it. And is that a mimetic thing, or is that a reference? Sure. I can think of another example. Um, with the newest God of War, um, mm -hmm. which had an insane animation team and graphics department, they took mm -hmm. popular GIFs of a wide variety and recreated them 
as animations with got with either Kratos or other characters and released those as gifts. So now the only one of those I've seen is him throwing his computer into the trash uh, dumpster a la Ron Swanson. There's actually two Ron Swanson ones um, in the episode where what? Ron Swanson gets um, drunk off of snake bite or whatever it's called. Yes. He and he's dancing yes. with his hat flopping around. They made a gift. Y- yes. With, with the with the Janet snake hole fascinator. Yeah. Yes. Um, they made a gif of the one of the the group of kids like getting behind the other kid when he smokes somebody in a diss and like. The one kid p- passes by with his hands on his cheek, like they recreated that. I'm a, I'm about to end this whole man's career. That one. Yep, that one. Um, yep. like and so that's brilliant. But is that a meme or a reference? Because also when we're talking about gifts, shifts, whatever, don't at me. Um, the I, ifs, <laughs> jifs. Um, the the idea that you do something like that is that referential? Are you just referencing those gifts, or because those gifts are used so commonly? Is it mimetic? Are those considered memes? Because gifing is a whole other category. You know, tons of people, I included, use gifts conversationally. Instead of responding with words, you respond with gifts that have the text in it, ex- uh, you know, expressing what you want to express. It's one of my favorite ways to communicate. I swear to God. <laughs> it's just satisfying. But the idea is, is that considered mimetic? Because you're you're transcending basic communication and you're doing it a way that is considered humorous or strange or unique. Um, and like, I would say that the, the God of war stuff is referential, right? You're taking something that exists and referencing it with something else that exists. But again, they didn't do it for the game. He doesn't do those gif set emotes in the game. They made gifts out of those things. And so you could argue that that goes beyond reference because the sole purpose of animating that stuff by the team was to release it into the world as gifts. I thought of another GIF they animated. Um, they had Atreus do the thumb, like the sitting at the computer thumbs up thing. Um, from, yes, I've seen that one too. Uh-huh, okay, yeah. Which also um, the team behind, I believe, Snake Eater or one of the others did that with Snake. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, it's just interesting to me when we get into this dialogue about it because again and clearly we are birds of a feather we like communicating in gifts that's technically language right like it's communicating in allegory it's communicating in giving uh giving abstract thought or abstract ideas or long lengthy ones connecting it to a singular image um so last week i had a very interesting, I would want to say, like, Inception-like nerd moment. Okay. Um, last week, I was playing uh, Dungeons & Dragons with some friends, mm-hmm. and our DM had a shirt that everyone was really excited about. And, like, his his fiance had gotten it for him, and, like, other people were like, oh, my God, that's so cool, that's so funny. And I was vaguely aware of what it was, but... I did not get the reference and I had to look it up and it's very funny because of the reference I had to look up. Matt, are you at all of a Star Trek fan? Of course. Have you seen the shirt Darmok and Jalad at Tanagra? Yes, I have. I have never, I have seen some of the next generation. I know the smiling face of Patrick Stewart. I know it's Jean-Luc Picard. And the fact that it's a shirt that makes it look like it's a concert and says September 1991, it's very easy to zero in on the fact this is the Next Generation reference. And those who are also not folks who have watched all of Star Trek The Next Generation or, in fact, this particular episode, it is about when the crew of the Enterprise finds themselves on a planet that the Universal Translator cannot translate their language because it's not a matter of one one to one. They speak entirely an allegory and reference. <laughs> yeah. And we I as nerds way, speak like... nearly entirely in allegory and reference. And memes are the evolution and distribution of that with no set dictionary so no one throws their hands in the air because we're ruining language. It's already <laughs> its own language that is just wiggly and wet and weird. And so I found myself at a funny point of like, I had to look up. I couldn't translate this reference. I had to look it up. And at the end of the episode, an event occurs, which then becomes a new reference. 
So for me, have, having the Tanagra moment is just like, I know this is something, but I don't get it. Just smile through until you can figure it out. That's really good. That's, that is kind of a uh, great... Uh, all-encompassing permutation of the things we were talking about. And of course, I'm sure that we've left out plenty of memes. Um, I try and share as many memes as I can on the Fun and Games Facebook page as I see them happen. You do. You do a good um, job of it. Thank you. <laughs> but if y'all f- have uh, want to bring up stuff that we haven't talked about, please do. Um, I've appreciated the discourse that's uh, recently been popping up on the on the Facebook page and on the Twitter. Um, shout outs, of course, to the Games Gone podcast who have been very vocal, um, a matter of L and a matter of M, Michael and Larry, who have been uh, super communicative and seem to be enjoying the show a lot. So thank you. Yes, thank um, you so much, guys. Um, as we wrap up, I want to remind our loyal listeners that you can rate and review us on your favorite podcatcher of choice. Um, you can uh, recommend us on Facebook. All of it helps us to get featured. Also, we're actually going to be in the flesh in places. So if you are local to the tri-state area, you can actually hang out with me and Jeff in person. Um, in By the time this comes out, a week from when this episode drops, we Jeff and I, in a more unofficial capacity, will be at FlameCon in NYC, um, wandering around, hanging out, playing some D&D, which I'm really excited about because I've never actually played D&D with you before, which seems criminal. Yeah. You're, we're, uh, we're in two different boroughs, man. It's impossible. It is, yeah, so far away. Um, and then we are in a an official press capacity going to be at a video game con. Jeff was there last year. We did an episode on it. This year we will both be there. Um, so there'll be fingers, some way better coverage. Way better coverage. Way better fingers, coverage. <laughs> fingers crossed we're hoping to do a live podcast as well. Uh, so keep an eye out on that. Um, they haven't confirmed all of the panels yet, but I am gunning to get us to record an episode live. Um, if you have ideas and suggestions for a live episode, please let us know. Um, we would love to know your thoughts. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm excited to do that. Um, I hope if I can do like a con a month, like that's a new goal for me. Like you're beating a game uh, every, every month uh, last year. Mm-hmm. This one seems more feasible. Yeah, uh, it's true. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but yeah, I think uh, we would love to, first of all, we'd love to see you all in person, but keep the conversation going. Tell us all of your favorite memes. If there's a meme I've shared that you've enjoyed, please let me know. I'm very proud of most of the ones I share. Yeah, I, I, I do want this to start just a goddamn meme train. Oh, yeah. The, the post on this episode, I'm giffing the crap out of it, to say the least. I, I, I need to start cultivating some stuff here. I've, I've, <laughs> I've got some folders I need to select and, and curate. This is important. This is a conversation. Thank you for being a part of it. I'm Jeff Moonen. And I am Matt, a.k.a. Stormageddon. And happy gaming.